Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today we're going to be repairing an ARP string ensemble. Uh, this is the ARP SE4 string ensemble. It was actually made for ARP under a uh, license for, uh, from uh, Eminent Organ Company. Uh, Selena String Ensemble is another uh, brand name that it gets distributed as. And in fact, these ARP stickers and string ensemble stickers are just covering up Solina string ensemble there on the cover. I made a previous video where I uh, repaired a, a string ensemble, um, so I'm not going to go into all the boring details that I went into in that one. Um, but basically, I picked this string ensemble up as a broken broken unit, and uh, now I have a very special customer who who would like a string ensemble and uh, plans to use it to record an album to pay tribute to a, a very uh, special string ensemble user. So uh, we're going to get this working like a champ for him and, uh, and so he can put it to good use. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do with the string ensemble is get it out of its wooden case. Uh, the wood case is a fiber, fiberboard case and uh, you can't see it uh, from this angle, but there's a little bit of damage to the back here, uh, which we're going to repair so everything can, can fit together. Right now, things are kind of not, not really very firmly attached, so we're going to get the case kind of fixed up. But the way that we would get into the case to open it up is there's three screws on the back here, here, and here to get the hood off. And then we will unscrew in, in, so let me get that off and then I'll show you uh, what's inside. So with the top off, uh, there's apparently some screws missing here on the side that are holding the back part in. But uh, basically this is a big steel frame with trays of circuit boards and the keyboard assembly. And it just sits inside this little boat of a, of a case. So uh, to get the keyboard assembly and the steel frame out, which is what we're interested in, in, in fixing up, uh, there's some screws on the bottom. So we're going to remove those screws and then we'll be able to lift this up and out to work on it. Normally we'd have to remove the four screws from the bottom, but in this case it wasn't even attached. So I just lifted it out and uh, pulled the uh, power connector, power cord through this hole. And then uh, now I can set this aside. I'm going to do some repair to it uh, so the screws can, can get in there and it can be uh, all firmly put together. But this is the part that we're interested in right now. So let's take a look at it. So right off the bat, I'm noticing some problems. Uh, I noticed that one of the two fuses is missing. And the fuse clip that holds the second fuse is, is also uh, damaged. So uh, we're going to need to put that on our list of parts that we're going to need to repair this. And uh, let's uh, take a look at the power supply and the first tray of circuit boards and see how things stand there. So I've opened up the first tray of circuit boards and we're looking at the power supply board now. And uh, the uh, only thing that I note on here is this this big 100 ohm resistor uh, is not original and you can see that someone uh, someone just cut the leads to the original resistor and uh, and put that one there. Uh, it's the wrong value um, so we're going to be changing that. Uh, I have a kit that I sell on my website synthchaser.com that rebuilds the power supply of the string ensemble. Usually that's a uh, uh, since it's an unregulated supply, it's, it's important to do that uh, if it hasn't been done. Uh, so we're going to replace pretty much every component on this board, the bridge rectifier, these beefy power resistors, and all the capacitors. But there's also sections of the power supply that are on other boards, like over here on the master oscillator board. Uh, these power resistors, you see, have taken so much heat, they were underrated that the uh, markings with their values uh, peeled off. And... Uh, you can see down down below uh, there's some scorching to that resistor there uh, so we're gonna have to replace that too but we also replace the capacitors on this board as well um, because a, a power rail is actually derived here a 15 volt rail um, other things that I'm noticing uh, that that don't seem right um, I notice that many of the trimmer resistors are damaged. They're, uh, the wiper is broken off. 
see that one and uh, and that one this is what it what it looks like you can see the the wipers there in the middle of the resistive element and these it's just broken off so I'm gonna have to find some trimmers that that uh, will fit in that space um, or take some trimmers from another Selena generally I would want to replace them with new ones if I can find ones that that fit um, physically fit um, because they're 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 not sealed they're just open there so putting a, a old replacement one in um, just doesn't seem like a good idea so I'm gonna fold down the next tray of circuit boards and we'll take a look at, at how things look in there so on the next tray we find the gating circuit board and uh, this actually looks pretty good um, I don't see any signs of uh, any real signs of visible damage there we're gonna replace this capacitor here um, but there's there's no physical damage or, or charred components or broken components that I can see with my eye doesn't mean that it's working properly but um, in our first pass we're just going to recap this finally we're looking at the back side of the keyboard and I notice here that the uh, the strain relief bushing is missing for the uh, the power cord that's what's going to prevent this from uh, number one being yanked out uh, if you tug on it and number two uh, we don't want this cord to touch the metal frame because over time it will uh, it will cut through the insulation on the wire and uh, cause a safety hazard. So we're going to replace that strain relief bushing. Uh, but I'm looking at the circuit board here on the back and uh, I notice typical uh, um, heat, heat problem here. Uh, my power supply rebuild kit has the capacitors for the power supply rail on this board. This is the base board. Uh, but the kit also includes bigger resistors that are used to derive these power rails. So these, uh, these are rated probably a quarter watt and the, the new ones that are going to go in are, are going to be beefier and going to be able to handle the power uh, more easily and not uh, cause this, this heat problem that scorched the board here. But looking over the rest of the board, I don't see any immediate obvious issues. Um, yeah, so we did a, a first pass taking a look at the keyboard and uh, we've identified some things that we're going to re repair while we recap this and uh, once it's recapped and the power supply is rebuilt uh, then we'll fire it up and, and test it out there's no point doing that now uh, you know turning it on uh, could only serve to damage things further so I'm going to rebuild the power supply and I'll show you what that looks like we've stripped down and cleaned up the power supply board now we're going to build it back up Here's the rebuilt power supply board. Uh, pretty much every component on here, with the exception of a couple small resistors and the diode, have been changed uh, to beefier, uh, beefier components, higher wattage resistors, better quality uh, components, uh, higher voltage capacitors, higher temperature rating capacitors, etc. Uh, I have the, uh, the replacement trimmers uh, coming in, so they haven't been installed yet. Uh, but over here on the control board, I've, uh, I've changed these resistors uh, and changed these capacitors that are part of the power supply rail that's found on this board. And uh, over on the master oscillator board, uh, I've changed the capacitor that's part of the power supply. And then uh, we noticed there was some paint uh, flaking on these old resistors here and what I thought was a, a charred resistor down below and I replaced all those um, with higher wattage even though they're actually smaller they're higher wattage resistors um, the resistor down below it turns out the black stuff wasn't uh, scorching it was a uh, discoloration from the glue that holds these ceramic standoffs in place but the, the glue seemed to have uh, have damaged actually the uh, the uh, leads for this transistor and so when I had these resistors off I found that this transistor was only actually had one lead connected so I desoldered it and soldered it a little closer to the board so the leads could get through um, and we'll have to see if that still works once we fire this up um, but we're as far as the power supply is done we're done with this tray of the board and we're gonna move on to the next one uh, which is the gate circuiting gate gate circuiting board which is uh, 
this one on the next level of tray. So I'm going to fold that down and I'll show you what we're going to change. On this next tray, uh, there's only one circuit board. It's the gate board. It controls the gating of each of the notes. Uh, it's the, the trick to make this synthesizer polyphonic. There's a capacitor that discharges when you, uh, when you press uh, a key. And then there's these uh, transistor arrays um, that are used for the gating of each of the, the notes. Um, there is a uh, power supply rail that's found on this board and used in other boards. Um, like I uh, mentioned in my previous video of uh, Solina repair and power supply rebuilding, uh, the power supply is spread all over the place in the synthesizer. So this here is the negative 15 volt rail, and it's the only voltage rail in the entire synthesizer that's uh, regulated. So uh, this transistor uh, regulates the voltage rail. Uh, this trimmer lets you adjust it. And this is a capacitor that's, that's um, used in connection with that. So this is the only capacitor on this board that we're going to replace. Uh, these other capacitors that are used for the gating um, usually are okay. Uh, so unless there's a specific problem with a specific note, we'll leave those in place and just change the one for the power supply. And here's the gate board with that capacitor replaced. Uh, even though that's the only component we're changing on this board, we still looked it over or I still looked it over to make sure there was no obvious damage to any of the other components on this board. And it looked okay. So now we're going to move on to the next board, the final board that we need to, uh, to rebuild to uh, complete the rebuild of the power supply, and that's the base board, which is located on the back of the synthesizer. So I will close up these trays and we'll open up the back and, and have a look at that board. So we're looking at the back of the synthesizer now, and on this tray there's three circuit boards. There's a divider circuit board, the bass board, which is responsible for the gating of the, the lower 20 keys, which can play bass notes, and then there's that register circuit board here. So on the uh, bass circuit board, internal to this board, there's a, a negative 5 volt rail, which is uh, gotten by uh, uh, using resistor dividers on the negative 25 volt rail. And you can see here the uh, resistors that are used for that are uh, the paint is flaking and the board underneath is scorched. So we're going to beef those up and replace the capacitor which uh, smooths out that rail. Uh, so three components to be changed here. And the way that we get this board off is uh, to work on the back side is there's four screws, two on the right, and uh, two here on the left uh, and I'll take those off and then this board will fold down and I can desolder the components from the back. So here's that rail with three replaced components. Uh, while I was down there working on it I had to look at the uh, the jacks and uh, they're looking pretty corroded. So I'm going to replace the output jacks and clean up the uh, the ones for the pedals and the gate and trigger output. Here's the uh, output jack panel with the, uh, the two output jacks replaced and the others cleaned up. Uh, the gate and the trigger and the uh, expression pedal. Uh, you see they're a little shinier than they were before. I cleaned those up with a uh, steel wool uh, to clear the oxidation or dirt or whatever was on there off. And they're pretty shiny now. And they'll work well. Uh, the output ones. Uh, I could have done the same with those, but uh, because this is the, uh, the audio path, I, I'd rather just replace it with, with new. Uh, here's what the old jacks looked like. So they were in, in pretty sad shape. Um, and it's pretty common on these Selena or the string ensembles that uh, those jacks are, are looking like that. It seems to be whatever material they used for the jack it wasn't the best choice and, and they, they didn't age well. So now I'm going to uh, put this board back, this tray of, of circuit boards back, and then the next thing we're going to turn our attention to is the, uh, the fuses and the, uh, uh, the trimmers that are broken. Now that I've got the fuses installed, it's time to replace these broken trimmers. As you can see, the wiper is snapped off. This is uh, what it's supposed to look like. Uh, so uh, these all have their wipers broken off. Here's one that I've already replaced. So I couldn't find a, a huge trimmer that 
meets the, the same footprint as the existing one. But I found one with a fairly large footprint. And what I did is I, uh, I trimmed the, uh, uh, I desoldered the, uh, the wipers lead and then the two end points. I cut these leads above board and folded them down to make little pads. Uh, I soldered these on the component side of the board and then uh, the wiper lead on the, uh, the bottom of the board and it actually aligns just perfectly um, just like the other one, uh, the original one. Uh, you can, uh, on the original there's a little hole here little hole there for you to stick a screwdriver in and adjust it. And as you can see on the one that I've replaced, you're able to do the same thing. Uh, I tend to frown on, uh, on, on, on cheesy things, uh, but in this case, um, this resistor is sealed, so it's going to be a lot better than this open frame one anyway. And, uh, and it can be made to fit uh, with, uh, within the existing spot. So that's what we're going to do for these other three trimmers, and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. So we've rebuilt the power supply, uh, changed all the capacitors and, pa and power resistors that are in the power supply section, changed the bridge rectifier, uh, repaired a couple other issues like some broken trimmers, some uh, bad uh, looking output jacks, uh, some fuses in the power supply, and uh, now it's time for the moment of truth. We're going to fire this up and see if it works. So I'm going to select one of the voices here, and we have some sound. Trying the different string voices. I hear some noise there in the output. I'm going to have to take a look into that. And uh, the modulation effect seems to work. Uh, let's check the controls or the bass voices. master volume. That's working. Let's check uh, crescendo. And let's check sustain. So that seems to be working, but we, uh, we definitely have some uh, noise in the output that I'm going to need to track down. Uh, so that'll be the next step. So uh, one thing I noticed before I went to track down the noise issue uh, was the uh, I cleaned the switches and the, uh, the pots, and the uh, the tuning pot uh, seemed really stuck. And I can look in there and I can see the the wiper and it looks to be damaged. And uh, and the tuning pot has uh, no effect on the keyboard. I measured the resistance uh, between the three terminals, uh, one on the left, one in the middle, and I was getting an accurate resistance, uh, but the one in the middle and the one on the right were shorted. So I am going to change this pot to a new one and um, confirm that the tuning then works. I noticed the tuning pot on the front uh, didn't have any effect on the tune, so I traced the wiring back here to the master oscillator board and uh, two of the three uh, wires that connect this pot to the master oscillator are uh, disconnected. So I'm going to reconnect those and uh, the, hopefully the tuning effect will then work. So as I was sitting noodling around on this, uh, something happened. Uh, all of a sudden I started getting this. So uh, some component that had been dormant for many years uh, came back to life and uh, 
couldn't adapt to the modern world, so we're going to have to track him down and replace him. So first thing I turn my attention to is the uh, amplifier. Uh, the VCA and the output amplifier are both on this board. And uh, I noticed uh, I could see the, uh, the static noise present on the output amplifier, but not the voltage controlled amplifier. And uh, one thing that I'm noticing here are these uh, capacitors, these 220 microfarad capacitors have leaked. Uh, these are smoothing the rails for the output amplifier. So I am going to change these capacitors for good measure. I'm going to change both of the op amps on this board uh, and replace them with socketed ones. And uh, we will go from there. So I've isolated the crackling problem to this modulator board. Um, I actually wound up replacing the trimmer pot on this one uh, when I started troubleshooting the source of the noise, uh, I determined it was coming from up here and uh, uh, these pots control the volume for each of the effects and I adjusted the, the volume for this one and, and the wiper easily broke so I replaced it. Um, so right now I have, uh, uh, each, each of these is responsible for a different effect. So this is a low pass filter, this is a phase shifter and this is an inverter. So right now I have the volume turned off for these two, and this one is on, and I hear no noise. And uh, I can play just fine. So if I were to turn this pot uh, completely the other direction, I'd be turning off all three, all three of the effects, and now when I play the keys I get nothing. So now I'm going to turn on this first one here, and I turn it on, and, and there's a significant amount of background noise. So there's a problem to troubleshoot on this one with the background noise. Turn that off. And then this is the third one. This is the one where uh, I'll turn this one on, and you can hear for yourself. There we go. There, now I'm getting the crackling noise seemingly randomly. So uh, this one, somewhere on this circuit board, is the, uh, um, is the crackling problem, and there's a noise problem on this one. This one seems to be working okay. So I'm going to troubleshoot this with the oscilloscope, and I'll tell you what I find. So I did some troubleshooting of the, uh, the third modulator card, the one that seemed to be causing the crackling noises. And uh, crackling noises, intermittent problems like that, a uh, scream of a cold or cracked solder joint. Uh, so in that case, we have a very scientific method of, of locating these uh, as quickly as possible. So I didn't use the oscilloscope for this. I used what's called the chopstick test. In the chopstick test, you take a, a small non-conductive rod, like a chopstick, or in this case, a, a stick of bamboo with a flat tip and you poke around on the different leads of the components there and uh, you look for either the problem to stop or the problem to start and then you've probably located the the component with the cracked solder joint or, or you're, you're close to it. So I was poking around on the top of the, that modulator card and uh, it went nuts with, uh, with the static uh, so I reflowed the, uh, the joint that I thought was responsible and all the other joints on that portion of the board and as you can hear we've had it uh, going in the background uh, while I've been explaining this and there's been no crackling noises I can play and uh, there's no there's no intermittent crackling so uh, it looks like we repaired that that problem uh, which turned out to be a cracked solder joint now we can turn our attention to the other modulator card, which seems to be putting out a fair amount of noise. So I took a look with the oscilloscope at this modulator board, which had a noise problem. And I, I followed the input signal past the delay, uh, and I also reversed from the uh, output. I uh, saw it was present on the, uh, the volume pot. Uh, so that, that pretty much left these two uh, transistors, which were used in the low-pass filter. And I found uh, this one right here was responsible for the noise. 
Uh, it is a, uh, what is this, a BC-169B, which is out of print or out of production. Um, but it's just a standard uh, NPN transistor uh, with a kind of a medium gain. I used a 2N3904, uh, which is uh, plentiful. Uh, the gain is a little lower than the, the BC-169B, but in this application, uh, how it's being used, uh, it's an acceptable substitute. Uh, generally, when you're replacing a transistor, you want to match, uh, use ones with similar gains. But so now I have this modulator on, and, and there's no noise. So now I can turn all three of the modulators on, and uh, I should be good to go. Um, so I'll do that, and we'll uh, do a demonstration of the keyboard. So electronically now we have this working uh, perfectly, uh, just about as perfectly as you can get. Uh, I have all three modulators on, and this is all the voices selected. And, uh, sounds nice and clear. There's no uh, static, you know, hiss. There's no random crackling. Uh, the features of the synthesizer will work okay. So, like here's a crescendo. Here's sustain. The bass volume adjusts properly. Uh, we can turn the modulation off. Put the modulation back on. Uh, it's in tune. So uh, electronically, this is, is good to go. Now I can turn my attention to the case. Uh, the case of this one um, had a little bit of damage uh, that was uh, preventing uh, some screws from holding, so I'm going to repair it with a two-part epoxy, uh, and I'll show you that in just a moment. The String Ensemble's case is made of particle board, and uh, oftentimes these, uh, these get damaged. This one wasn't so bad. Uh, the back panel had some damage here that was preventing some screws from holding on the side. Um, so we're going to try to repair that so the case can fit back together and, uh, and not, not fall apart. So to do this we're going to use a, a two-part wood epoxy. This kind of looks like peanut butter. This part and this part looks like cream cheese. So I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, part A and a little bit of the part B and I'm going to mix them together really good. So now the uh, wood epoxy has set and I've sanded it down and we have some material there now that the screws can hold into. So I'm going to drill some pilot holes and reassemble the case. Uh, then I'll put the, uh, the synthesizer back inside and uh, we'll be done. The last thing to do is to install uh, the missing strain relief bushing. Uh, strain relief bushing looks like this. It's a little uh, plastic piece that, that holds this uh, power cord so it doesn't get yanked out and it doesn't rub around and uh, expose the wiring as it rubs on the metal frame. And to put that in, uh, you put the, the wire in, inside there and then you compress it with a tool like this and push it in. So I'm going to do that and then I will put the synthesizer back in the case and close it up and we'll show you what it looks like. No synthesizer repair video would be complete without showing the pile of old components that we took out. A whole bunch of capacitors, uh, a bunch of resistors, uh, broken trimmers, bridge rectifier, bad transistors, corroded output jacks. It's a big pile of stuff that we pulled out of there. Uh, but that's what's necessary to get this running smoothly and uh, working great for years to come. It's all finished and ready for a quick demonstration. I've turned all six of the voices on. You can hear you can get a very big string sound out of it. Um, you have uh, six different voices. There's a uh, horn, trumpet, Violin, viola, there's the bass, which is monophonic, contrabass, which is an 
an octave lower. And you can mix together the bass and the string, so you can bass up or down. Uh, you have a crescendo control, which uh, is the attack. If I have just strings on, it'll sound a little different with the attack. You have the uh, sustain or you can have a short sustain, and then of course your master volume control. This button turns the modulation off, which is the three special effects, like a chorus, phaser. So this is what the same voices sound like without the uh, uh, modulation effects. And with the modulation effects. So in a nutshell, we uh, have repaired this ARP string ensemble and uh, we've beefed up the power supply so it'll last for another 40 something years and uh, we repaired any remaining issues to get this thing working right and, and in tune and it's ready to be used. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post in the comments. Uh, also, if you need parts or service for your string ensemble or other vintage synthesizer, please visit me on my website synthchaser.com. Thanks for watching.